Monday the 5th of April. Thank you for tuning in again to the usual weekly Labour Bulletin from the Democratic Alliance. This week we have seen some interesting developments. Firstly, there have been some mooted changes to the equality legislation. This legislation will be problematic for employers as it's trying to hold employers liable for damages for discrimination at the workplace even if they didn't know about the discrimination. Secondly, there have been numerous reports about the trade union membership declining rapidly. This is a problem and it's going to create many problems in the future. Thirdly, we have seen a demand from government workers, in some instances, for over an 80% increase. I know the press has uh, reported a 60% increase, but in some of the instances, 80%. And, of course, they're even asking for danger pay, interestingly enough. Finally, Kosatu has attacked government's rollout of the vaccine plan and has said that the government has failed to meet even the timid targets that they had set belatedly. This is Kosatu speaking against government. They're in a tripartite alliance and Kosatu is attacking government. There's also an interesting arbitration award given a few years back and has now come back to haunt us where tape recording was produced when it was recorded without the employee's permission. The arbitrator decided then that he wasn't going to take the recording into account because it was no permission. So thank you once again for tuning in. I'm Michael Bagram, the Labour spokesperson for the Democratic Alliance, and this is Monday evening, the 5th of April, 2021. To start off, we must acknowledge that the government is desperately trying to control everything that we do with regard to employment in South Africa. The enormously high regulatory margins mean that it's becoming more and more difficult to create job opportunities. You employ someone, you expect it to know 11 pieces of labor legislation, reams and reams of regulations, and they're forever changing and updating and making it more and more difficult to employ in South Africa. Very different to jurisdictions around the world who are trying to make it easier to employ. They're trying to deregulate. They're trying to deregulate for small business, but not here. We're doing exactly the opposite. The sub suggested changes to Papuda that's the legislation on discrimination, would mean that the liability to the employer stretches even to a situation which takes place between employees. So if two employees have a fight, those two employees fighting with each other might make discriminatory remarks. It would mean then that the employer might be responsible for breaching the discrimination legislation. It can be horrific. For instance, if one employee has better qualifications than the other, one would expect that the employer might want to move the better qualified one rapidly up the ranks. But this might not be acceptable. It might not be acceptable at all. However, it can be argued that the non-qualified employee did not have equal opportunities to have an education because of being previously disadvantaged. So think of the consequences. Someone said, I couldn't afford to go to university, but my colleague could. Why are you discriminating against me? So you can imagine the problem. This previous disadvantage might create a situation where there could be a claim against the employer because of discrimination. The road to purgatory is paved with good intentions. Obviously, the government is hoping to try and level the playing fields. But in doing this, you're going to stymie jobs, you're going to create a handbrake to job creation in the future. It's already happening. Most employers are trying to mechanize, computerize, outsource, import, rather than produce here in South Africa because of the problems that they're having with employment in South Africa. We have disadvantaged communities all over, and for them to then say that we're going to have to make it equal, it's going to be a problem. And if you put that burden on the shoulders of the employer, instead of the burden on the shoulders of the state, you're going to have employers saying it's not worth our while to employ. For instance, education. That's the problem of the education department. Don't make it the problem of the employer. Like I said, the road to purgatory is paved with good intentions. 
In essence, the government is trying to help out those previously disadvantaged communities, but to over-legislate will lead to employers saying, I would rather outsource. And this is already happening in our country. I repeat once again that the unemployment figures in the youth are over 65%. That's two out of every three can't find a job. In the ages between 15 and 25, if they're not in a tertiary education or training center, they can't find jobs. We have overall, by everyone's definition, at least a 40% unemployment in South Africa. This is very close to insurrection. Society, civil society won't take it. They're going to do something. We've all been aware of the numerous retrenchments taking place on a daily basis. This past week I've been involved in retrenchments in every single industry. It's absolutely horrific. It doesn't matter what the industry is, they're retrenching. This leads to extreme worries within the trade union movement. Even the public service are seeing union density drop to 23%. So our density of trade unions, which was pretty high, has dropped to about 20%. The unions are starting to fight with each other to gain more membership. It has been strongly argued that the politicization of the union movement is creating all sorts of problems and including the members being disillusioned with their unions. There's been a mushrooming of small unions. Small unions can be a big problem at the workplace because many of their organizers aren't qualified, don't know the law, and are looking desperately to try and gain membership. And the way they do it is they offer unbelievable offers, saying we'll get you a 20% increase, or what we'll do for you is the following. People then join and expect to see those increases, expect to see the change of terms and conditions of employment. The union can't get it, it leads to dissatisfaction at the workplace, and we're seeing that right now. The dissatisfaction is now at an all-time high. It's creating havoc at the workplace. I've experienced various problems with small trade unions over the last few weeks, where demands have been completely unreasonable and threats of strike have taken place even before the discussions have been concluded. We've also seen a new wave of problems where demands have come via political parties. And I don't know if anyone on this line would have heard what's going on, but many shop stewards are arriving from small unions saying, you don't pay us our increase, we're going to call in the EFF, for instance, and we're going to come and trash your workshop or whatever they are threatening to do. And I'm getting more and more of these claims coming through. It's absolutely horrific. Turning to Kosatu, they are at last making announcements and press releases attacking the government with regard to the failure to vaccinate the country. Kosatu has compared us to other countries in Africa who have moved far ahead, us, ahead of us without us keeping up with anyone in southern Africa. The other countries are rolling out their vaccine plans and the vaccination. At the rate we are going, it's going to take 10 years to vaccinate the country. I want to quote what Kosatu said, and I quote, The repeated delays and lack of actual vaccines are simply inexcusable when the lives of thousands of people are at risk. These delays come from additional preventable to deaths. There can be no condoning of this degree of recklessness incompetence on the part of government. The mediocre performance is unacceptable, and government's napping on the job has real consequences. The trade union movement then goes on to state, and I quote again, the economy in the nation cannot sustain lockdowns or periodic shutdowns indefinitely. The UIF does not have limitless funds. The president needs to intervene in the vaccine program and provide concrete detail and dates as to when the vaccine will be received. It is only once the population has been vaccinated that the economy will start to recover. Close quote. This is real war talk coming from a partner of the Tripartite Alliance Kosatu. War talk. They said, only once we have received the herd immunity will the economy start coming right. And they're correct. They're correct because the Democratic Alliance has been calling for these vaccines and for rollout from the provinces, from private sector. Government has really failed the people. They've failed the workforce for sure, but they failed the people of South Africa. We must understand that the Democratic Alliance is probably the only avenue that will give us that proper herd immunity.
We're hoping to have that done in the Western province soon. The last hope for the community, for the economy, is to go and make sure that that vaccine is sent as properly as possible. This is Michael Bagram, Labour spokesperson for the Democratic Alliance, Monday the 5th of April 21. Thank you.